Is it? Yeah, I enjoyed your lesson today, Miss. Only today? No, Miss. I always enjoy your lessons. I found it interesting. I want to study politics at university. Do you? I think you'd be really good at that. I wonder if you had a book I could borrow, Miss. Um... Take this one. It's really informative. It's a really good read. I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks, Miss. You in there, is it? Oh, get lost, Laura. He was looking at your all through Scott's lesson. So, he was looking at my job and all the way through science. Yeah, that's only because she was sick and a jumper at break. <sighs> good day at school, love. It was all right. I did have a good history lesson, though. Suffragettes. Mm. I'll uh, learn this book from Mrs. Scott. Well, that's nice. Suffragettes. Mm. Lots for women. I know, I did go to school. Your great grandmother was a suffragette. I'm not a suffragist. No, suffragette, suffragist, what's the difference? Quite a lot. Why have you ever mentioned this before? I'd forgotten until you mentioned it. She was called Isabella, weren't you? What do you know about her? Well, not really. Um, Grandma did talk about her. Um, she was a suffragette and she chained herself to the railings at Buckingham Palace a few times and went to prison for it. Hang on. Your grandma gave me this years ago. That's your granddad. Oh, this is her. And that's her sister, Beatrice. That's her? Yeah. See, she's got a look of you. I wonder if they call her, is her? Right, come on. We've already lost an hour at the mill. You need to go back to yours, get your stuff, before the landlord chucks it out on the street. And then you go back to mine and you wait for me there. You got that? Yes, Aunt Edith. I said, have you got that bee? Stop your snivelling. Your ma's dead, and that's that. Hey, we've 
you've eaten that, you can get straight to bed. And don't let candle burn out. I'll be back late. And I probably have a friend with me. So I don't want to hear or see either of yours. Thanks for putting us up, Aunt Edith. Duty, innit? I'm used to living on my own. Anyway, Isabella, you start work on Monday and you'll be living in. But... I've arranged it with an acquaintance of mine. You'll be in service at Blackstone Hall. But my ma wanted me to stay at school, get a scholarship and go to university. She ain't here, is she? She always had fanciful ideas, my sister. As long as you're living with me, I can't afford to keep you both in fancy schooling. taken badly. Martha, Lady Amelia's maid. Rose, scullery maid. Say hello, Rose. You'll get used to her. You'll be showing her room, Rose. All you need to know is be put five to lay the fire. You'll be helping Rose to all the meals, do the clearing and cleaning up. And generally just be ready to answer any call from upstairs. You address the master as Sir, Lady Blackstone as her ladyship, and the two children as Master Finley and Miss Lydia. Any problems, ask me or Maud. I'm called, is it? Not in here, love. Formal in this house. I'll get you fixed up with your uniform. It'll be coming out your age so you best look after it. Isabella, Ray, eh? Nice name. My father was Italian. He was called Giuseppe. Giuseppe Pasciano. He was on his way to America when he met me ma, got a job on the docks and stayed. He died when a cotton bell fell on him. Broke his back. And your ma? Died from TB last week. My Aunt Edith took me and my sister B in. She didn't want to, but she had to keep up appearances. Her being family and that. I never had family. Lady Blackson took me from an orphanage three years ago. That's nice. Only because of colour. She brings visitors round to the heart to gawp at me. She likes to pretend she's doing a bit to show off the greatness of the Empire. What are they like? The Blacksons. You won't see much of the Master, Sir Headler. He's away most of the time at Parliament Place. And when he's here, he's at one of his meals. Lady Amelia pretends she's one of those modern women. She's always inviting them pancurse round. It's all for sure, though. Something to chat to a lady friend about. And the children? Finlay, he's a real nasty piece of work. Try not to let him catch you on your own. The last girl ran away after a week because of him. Lydia, she tries to be a rebel. She doesn't have a good word for anyone except her father, and that's because she's scared of him. That sounds horrible. Could be worse. Could be working in the workhouse. Just do your job, do as you're told, and keep your mouth shut. Could do with a bit of a scrubbing. Easy, isn't it? I must say, your hair should be up. Can we be friends, Rose? Might as well. I haven't got any others. Can you read and write words? Of course I can. Can't you? I never had schooling. Will you teach me? Of course I can. And what are friends for? Quick, your chance to be a maid. Go on to the front door. Me? Yes. You have to start somewhere. Answering the door's a good one. Go on. You must be new. Yes, madame. Anna. Anna Kenna. I need to stand on ceremony with me, love. Are you going to invite me in then? I'm going to stand here all day. I am expected. I think you're supposed to show me to the drawing room. Drawing room? Yes. Drawing room. Better call it parlour, Miss Yes, madame. I mean, Miss. 
I mean, oh, stop crying so hard. I'm here to see Lady Blackstone. What's your name? Isabel Pasciano. Pasciano? I worked alongside Pasciano at Millen Oldham. Abigail? That would be my ma. Oh, grand woman! We used to pass around socialist newspapers to the other girls. She died a week ago. Oh, Lord. You poor girl. <sighs> Mother's out. She's gone to town. Probably forgot about you. So how are you, the nanny? I'm just fine, Miss Lydia. And yourself? A long line of maids. I wonder how one girl will take till Finley gets to work. <laughs> Can't got your tongue? No, miss. Miss Lydia to you, girl. Fetch her some tea. And walk, idiot! You don't have to treat people like that. She's a maid. How do you expect me to treat her? Like a human being. I thought you were a believer of women's rights. I'm sorry to say this, Lydia, but I often feel that you and the likes of your mother pay lip service to the cars because it's a fashionable amusement. No. We want the vote for women of some standing. You can't give the vote to people like her. We'd have them awful socialists before we knew it. And what about me? Would I not get a vote? Remember, I'm just a poor mill girl from Oldham. Well, you're different. No different from a maid. Well, you're the exception. Equal rights for all. Next thing you know, you'll be demanding rights for the likes of Rose. And why not? She has thoughts, feelings, dreams, just like you. Why should you be so... So extreme. It's the only way us women will get our voices heard. For decades, we've been trying to get the government to give us a right to vote. What have we achieved? Votes for a few local elections. Women, they have the right to vote in Australia, New Zealand, America, even in the Isle of Man. They're not properly civilised there, are they now? I intend to raise your man soon at a meeting. Christabel Pankhurst at Free Trade Hall. Speaker Sir Edward Gray. Sits before and set which when liberals get into power. No doubt he'll have that two-faced turncoat Winston Churchill with him. The MP of Alden? He's two-faced. He's conservative not that long ago. Like your father. It's all right, not well. So across the floor of the house, joint liberals. Does this mean my daddy might lose a seat at the election? It's a strong chance he won't get elected again. Oh no. It'll mean he's at home all the time. It's in my intention to bring our cars firmly into the open at that meeting. I was hoping your mother might join us. No, my mother can't attend. Anyway, Daddy wouldn't allow it, but I can come though. You're too young, Lydia. Anyway, I must go. Give my regards to your mother. Tell her I called. I'll see myself out. The tea? Oh, um. I'm sorry, Isabella, but I must go. You know, you look so much like your mother. I hope the spirit lives on in you. You're a pretty little thing. You must be Isabella. Yes, sir. How did you know my name? I make it my business to know. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of each other. Isabella. Now then, now then, are you going to pay for the best china? Sorry, Maud. You met Finley then? You have, haven't you? Rose. And it's Master Finley. You can tell she asked, what did he do? Nothing. I don't want to talk about it. Yes. Quite right, my dear. Here, take some of the post box for me, please, Isabella. I thought the post by collected from the house. Family mail. This is from me to my boy, Alfie. He's a corporal in the Manchester Regiment, you know. He fought in South Africa, he did, against the Boers. But he's in India now. He's a good lad, my Alfie. Proper hero. Excuse me. You in a rush, then? I have to post a letter. <laughs> to me? No. Just as well. You can't read. Shut your fat mouth tight. Can I please pass? No. Do you know who he is yet? No. We're the Charlestown Scuttlers, king of all Scuttlers. Everyone's scared of us, the R Parade, Newton Eve. 
Even the Ancoats and the Bengal Tigers. You must be very proud. Now, now, little lass. Don't get lippy with water now. I think you owe me a kiss for that. Get away from me. Okay, leave it. Well, look who it is. It's Proddy Faxton. I ain't clapped eyes on you, Faxton, since I left that St. Pat's school. You didn't leave. You were expelled. Now let the girl be. Now you spoiled my fun. Can't have that, can we, boys? Lesson learned. You need a doctor. I'm all right. Thanks for sticking up for me. Eh, don't worry about it. You can't be a good kick in that one. Eh? <coughs> you really are hurt. I'm fine. Anyway, I've got to go. Can't be late for work. It's George. George Faxon. Is he? Well, is he? Let's hope next time we meet he'll be on a better circumstance. George? Yeah. Thanks again. You're my knight in shining armour. Aye. I just wish I'd put some on. Oh dear, still, he's a soldier. He'll be used to seeing blood. And I miss you all the time. How are things? All right, but I wish you were here with me. I hate Aunt Edith. We'll be together soon. Promise. Promise. Cross my heart. Where did you get that? Who did this to you, B? B, tell me now. I'm coming into that school. With Aunt Edith, she hits me. She says I should be with her, man. The witch. She told me not to let on or she'll put me in the orphanage. Don't do anything, Izzy. I'm all right, honest. Just hold on a bit longer, B. I won't let you down. Now go on, off you go and pay attention to your letters and numbers. Isabella? Miss Kenny? Anna? I can't call you that. It's more than my job's worth. I expect you're right. Lady Blackstone's out visiting friends in Leeds. Miss Lydia's out riding, I think. What's a pity. Still, you could let me in. It is a long walk from the railway station. Would you like any tea or lemonade? Oh, no, no. I won't stay long. I'm having lunch with the pancakes. Sit down, Isabella. Let's talk. I mustn't. Come well, on, there's no one to bother us. Tomorrow, Christabel and I are at Free Trade Hall. I'm sure your mum will be looking down on us. I hope I can be like her one day. You will be, Isabella. She called me Izzy. And then so shall I, uh, Izzy. Listen, she tried to come to one of our meetings. The Women's Social and Political Union. I don't encourage Lydia. She just sees us as something to annoy her father with. Called Teenage Rebellion. God, I can't believe how much of your mama seen you. I can see a strength in your eyes. Please try to be there. I'll look out for you. Pass leaflet on to Lady Blackstone. She won't come, but she'll only moan if she hasn't been asked. The book's for you. Uncle Tom's Cabin. It's a novel about the struggle against slavery in America. I get great inspiration from it. I always meant to give it to your mum. She's what got me into the suffrage movement. She'd give me books and newspapers to read. Inspiring she was. Bye, Isa. Bye, Miss. I mean, Anna. And thank you. What's your caller? Anna Kenny. She's always round here, that one. Don't know why the ladyship encourages it. It's people like her that give women a bad name. She's a missionary, spreading the word amongst the non-believers. And you're too far with girl getting above your station. She also asked me to go to one of those suffragette meetings. Well, you're not allowed. I suggest you go and fetch the coal in. Miss Lydia, have you got something better to do? <laughs> Made reading, whatever next. It's a novel. 
A maid reading a novel, no less. I may be a maid, but I can still read, sir. Which is more than I can say for that black girl. You mean Rose? And you mean she has a name? She's just a black servant, Mama's little pet. She works hard, sir. She learns quick. I'm teaching her her letters. How noble. I warn you not to take it too far. We don't want her sort of getting any ideas. Are you angry with me? I'm just a maid. Maids don't get paid to show emotions. What if I kissed you? I'd rather you didn't. It'd be unseemly for someone of your station to be seen kissing someone of mine. We could come to some sort of arrangement. Isabella, Bella, Bella, Isabella. I think not. It's not your place to think either. You do as you're told or you go out. That's up to your father. You'd soon get shot if you thought a scandal was in the air. This isn't right. Right, right. You don't have any rights. You're a maid. Nothing more than a bloody woman. Right, what rights do women have? You! You! Sir! Sir! You want to go far? Don't think I've finished with you. What is it, Rose? Nothing. I could see you needed rescuing. I love you, Rose. <laughs> what are you pair up to? Nothing, Maud. <laughs> Rose, Lady Amelia is having tea with two of her friends from the Charity League. Set a table for free. And take a glass of lemonade out for the gardener. I suspect he'll have a right thirst on him. George? Is he? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I'm one of the gardeners. You must be. One of the maids. Small world. I'm sorry last time I met you. I was a bit distracted. I think I'd say thank you properly. It was for me to say thank you for what you did. You saw to me injuries at Rio Florence Nightingale. Don't be daft. Here, for you. Right. Welcome. I'm parched. I have to go or I'll get in trouble. Wait. Yeah? Perhaps, if you're not doing anything, would you like to walk out with me on Sunday? But if you'd rather do something else. I'd love to. Yeah. Wouldn't it be grand to be a boatman sailing across the country? Don't you like working in the gardens? Yeah, of course I do. I hope one day to become a horticulturist. That sounds very grand. And I also want to be a member of the ILP. What's that? The Independent Labour Party. One day we'll have a big socialist government and I want to be part of it. I want to join the Women's Social and Political Union. I want to fight for women's rights. The Labour Party supports him. We've got a lot in common, me and you, Izzy. Hearts are culturist. I like the sound of that. It's a posh word for a gardener. I wanted to look down the pits like my pa, but there's a big explosion and it killed him. And my ma wouldn't let me go. Very wise. You know when you say me from them boys, why did they call you proddy? I went to a Catholic school, but they soon realised I wasn't Catholic. No one really cared that much, apart from Walter Lagan. He was the leader of that gang. Can I call you Proddy? No, you can't. Me pa, give this to me mum. And then my mum give it to me just before she died. I want you to have it. You left both of them. Me too. But I can't. It belonged to you, ma. It's not much use to me, is it? I can't wear it. Please, Izzy. Please take it. I bet you got loads of them in your pocket. Raise a hand out to every girl you meet. I'm sorry, George. I didn't mean to upset you. You'd best give it back then. No, no, it's sweet. It's just, I hardly know you. Stop. Stop? Looking at me. I have to go. It's early yet. My sister's living with my Aunt Edith, and she looks forward to seeing me. That's why I must go. You're right. I promise to bring a drink out to you tomorrow. I look forward to it. Rose, Rose, look. What's up, Rose? Nothing. You can't lie to me. I'm your friend, remember? I promise you won't say anything. Finlay. Oh, Rose. What's going on here? Idle hands. It's Rose, Maud. That Finlay. Is it? I won't be quiet. It's not right. We shouldn't be treated like this. Master Finlay? You know what he's like, Maud. Do something. Like what? I need this job and you need yours. So we'd be quiet and put up with things. Put up with things? What kind of world is this where women and girls can be abused and just have to accept it? 
The world we live in, a man's world. And you can do what you like, Isabella, but don't drag me into things. No wonder women get sat on. Watch where you're... George? Joel Ty. I haven't seen you in ages, mucker. I can't stop. Why not? What was... We're going to install this often. Oh, the hell. Quick, get in here. Come on. Seen that prod, George Saxton? I think he went up there. Come on. Aren't they glad you were here? How are you doing, Joe? I'm all right. I've taken up boxing. Thinking of turning professional one day. And you? I, I work up at boxing all. I mean, the job's good, and the money's fine when the weather's OK. Still the big socialist, eh? Of course, I am. I bet you'll be in the meeting in the Clough next Sunday, then. Bogot Old Clough? Yeah, Keir Hardy's supposed to be there. Thousands are going to turn up to see him. Well, the first socialist elected to Parliament. My pa's hero. Fancy a glass of ale? Yeah, sure. So, tell me about your boxing, Joe. Go on, girl. I dare you. Isabella! Yes, miss? I'd like to eat in the garden today. Yes, miss. I'm not sure I like your tone. Anything wrong? Your brother. Oh, Finley. Has he been flirting with you? I told him flirting with girls is fine. But flirting with girls under the orders? That's bad form. He attacked Rose. And that's none of your business. Rose, you say? Now that is bad form. One day. One day. We hear the same old arguments over and over. Women should be tied to the kitchen sink. Women should be tending to the young uns. Women should be like doormats to walk on. Don't feel should think that we seek to undermine that special role of women in the home. Providing care and calm, pity, purity and love. What we need in this time of great social reform is the firm hand and cool head of a woman. Yeah, you need a firm hand. Round your neck! We are asking for an end to the continued and outworn exploitation of our sex and the right to increasing opportunities to education and employment. Women don't need the vote in order that they might govern, but in order that they might not be misgoverned. Already we have seen the great strides that women can make in local government. Let that be the foundation of true and equal representation. Britain is a great empire, setting the example of human achievement across the globe. But there are those who envy our progress and seek to make their claims through violence and war. One day, we will have to stand up to those who threaten us. And when our menfolk are fighting to retain our empire, who will be called upon to keep our factories producing to provide the administrative skill to oil the wheels of commerce and government. Women, think about the glorious history and the leadership that women have demonstrated. Think of Boadicea in her battle against Roman invaders. Think of Elizabeth standing against the Spanish threat. I know that I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king. Think about the growth of our industry and empire that has been cared and nurtured for for over 70 years by our late queen. And mark my words, someday, this beloved land of ours will see a woman prime minister elected by its people. You spoke so well, but to so few. 
soft in that way, but even if we convert one person to the cars, it's an achievement. I'm glad you came though, is there? I would have been here sooner, but we had some trouble at the hall. With Master Finlay, he attacked Rose. He's a bad in that lad. It's a pity his father didn't discipline him years ago. And as for Amelia, she lets him get away with murder. Mark my words, one day, it will be murder. He hasn't done anything to you, has he? He tried. Listen, if things get too bad, you come to me. Take this. I know a family far from here who will take you in. Rose too. I couldn't travel far off. I have a sister living with my aunt. Well, I'm sure they'd take her too. The family will love welcoming new friends. I'd speak up for you. You're so very kind. How can I repay your kindness? But listen, try and beat the cloth on Sunday. I'll be there with a the pancake. I'll see you then. And is that the thanks I get? Why, thank you, kind lady. And? And? Oh, yeah. Thank you for bringing me a drink. Thank you for being you. Be careful, we might be seen. I don't care. Kiss me again. <gasps> <laughs> Shush! Sunday, there's a big meeting at the club. Care hardly speaking. And then Kenny and the Pankhurst are there too. May I take you? You may. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> you OK, Miss Lydia? I think it's my ankle. I think it's twisted. Is it swollen? No, it's fine. Just need to get some rest. Oh, thank you, George. It is George, isn't it? Yes, Miss Lydia. You're a fine fellow, George. Much nicer than those silly, immature boys I have to put up with. Nice hands, too. Bit grubby. I bet you've never heard a lady's hand before. None to call, miss. Do you find it pleasant? No. Uh, yes, Miss Lydia. What would you say if I was to kiss you, George? I'd rather you didn't, Miss Lydia. We'd get into bad trouble. From? I'm not going to tell. And you're not going to tell. So... You'd like me to kiss you then, George? Please, miss. I'd rather you didn't. How dare you tell me what I can or cannot do! If I want to kiss a boy under my orders, just as a mere of research, then I will just do that. You've got that, George. The glass. Step closer to me. Quickly! Now put your arms around me. Tighter. Thank you, George. I enjoyed that. I may call upon you again. Are you sure you want to do this, George? I've never been so sure in my life. I can't run away from Walter Lagan and his scuttlers on time. We're being King Billy. Is that you, George? What are you doing hanging around with Evans? Grow up, Walter. Well, you can stay and watch us beat the living daylights out of George if you want. I'm not here for you, gang. I'm here for you. One on one. Uh, Go on, Walter, you can take him, can't you? Yeah, of course I can. I just don't want to see him take the hiding he's going to get. I'll take my chances. I'm not scared of you, Walter. Go on, you can have him. Go on. Wait, it's a great lump. George! I would have paid a guinea to see that. You disappoint me, Finley. It looks like this is the third school you'll be drummed out of. It's a boring place, Father. That's neither here nor there, and certainly no cause to try to burn the place down. You're getting this family a bad name. I also hear you frequent the low dives in the town and consort with the lowest of loose women. You consort with the loose women, Father. That's natural for men in my position, but we only have dealings with the better class of loose women. Maybe if you give me a bigger allowance. Don't be facetious with me, boy. What does facetious mean, Father? Well, perhaps if you paid more attention at school, you'd know. Now listen to me, I have a task for you. Get it right, and we'll wipe the slate clean. I'll even turn a blind eye to the whiskey that you keep stealing. Seeming as you seem to know the low life of this town, I want to contact some of your scuttler acquaintances. There's going to be a very large meeting at Bugget Hill Clough on Sunday. Those blasted pankers and their suffragette cronies will be in attendance. 
Where was the suffragette? Your mother's a silly woman. Pretty but brainless like all of her sex. I allow her these little hobbies because it keeps her occupied and out of my hair. You're bald, father. I'm losing patience with you now. Sorry, father. I want the meeting broken up. I want chaos. I want injured people. But it's important that they only attack the lower class elements. Afterwards, I shall publicly blame the suffragettes for prompting the disorder. And I shall also blame the Labour Party for encouraging them. And I'll call for greater punishment for scuttlers. <laughs> all in all, it should be produced a real vote catcher for me in the coming general election. Well done, Father. Hmm, learn from me, boy. Now, go on about the business. One more thing, Father. I'll need money. You want to take photos of the gambling there? You go. Why me? Don't you want to see George? No. Why not? Sorry. He was kissing Miss Lydia. Oh yeah, he just walked up to me and said, I'm just a gardener and know my better, so you better let me kiss you. Don't be such a fool as that. She would have done it because it would amuse her. I'd like a turn in the garden today. But I'm not sure it's a good idea. That boy, George, is it? He made a pass at me. I will have him dismissed at once, Miss Lydia. Well, normally I'd agree, but there's something about these rough boys that I find rather exciting. <laughs> Izzy, Izzy, do I have to, do I have to show? You haven't been out with my drink yet? Go away. What? She said, go away. Shut up, Rose. Sorry. What's the matter? You know. I don't know. I saw you, you were kissing Miss Lydia. She made me do it, I had no choice. Do you think I want to kiss her when you're my girl? Not anymore, and you can forget about the meeting. I'd sooner go with Finley. Oh, Izzy, shut up, Rose, and here's your brooch. Give it to Lydia, not that she'd want cheap trash. Do with this as you please. I'll be at the gate on Sunday at noon. If you don't show up, I'll know we're finished. <laughs> Izzy. She feels a bit sick. Lady Amelia needs some help. She has lunch today at Heaton Park. Go and find Martha. What's this then? It belongs to Izzy, Isabella. George the gardener gave it to her. I'm out for lunch with Alison Connie today. Right, you are, Miss Lydia. What a lovely brooch. Yours? No. I wish it was. Apparently George Saxon gave it to Isabella as a gift. He must be smitten. Hmm. Bit of a shiner there, Walter. Do you want one like it, Mary Trucker? I was only making an observation, dear boy. I didn't mean to cause any stress. Get about your business. I will. I've already had a good day. I've relieved three men of the pocket watches. And now I'm going to perambulate to the Midlands Hotel and see what finds are to be had there. Good sight is old Mary. Tell she has breeding. Where that solicitor? You tell her enough for the secretary and all the pay cash. Left her and a mile without a brass farthing. Hey up, here comes one of those she's already pickpocketed. Walter Lagan. He wants to know. It's no matter. Make all you want, may I? I? Told you in your scuttle someone's the best in the city. The best. Excellent. So I have a proposition to make. Yeah, we'll make it then. I want you and your friends to break up a meeting on Sunday at the club, crack a few skulls, cause a panic. For you? For money, a good deal of money. Shows then? I'm not going to come here with a pocket full of money, and here's a five, I'll give you 20 when the job's done. So how's about we take this and bash your head in? Ready, boys. You may be an off bottler, give me some credit, I can find the gang that will be more obliged. You don't want that to do with them, but you've got a deal. That's better, I'll give you the instructions. Nice. You're going somewhere? It's the big meeting in the club today. You coming, Rose? No, there's nothing there that need bother the likes of me. I decided to go with George after all. I was just being silly about him and Lydia. 
He don't like her any more than he likes me, does he? Of course not. She'll have all the rich boys chasing her. Her sort always stick together. You see my brooch, Rose? It was in the scullery. Maud was eyeing it up. I'd watch her. I've seen her swinging the port while nobody's watching. I'll have to go. George will be waiting. Get going before he changes his mind. George, you look very, very dashing. Are you going to the club? Yeah. And so am I. Perhaps you could escort me. I'm waiting for Izzy. Izzy? Isabella. Oh, she told me she was ill and she can't make it. She told me to give you this brooch. She said you'd understand. So, guess we could go together then. I will be late. Come on, George. You'll be safe with me. And where do you think you're going? It's my day off. I'm going out. You needed him. Miss Lydia gave me strict instruction. No, I have to go. I'm meeting George and Miss Kenny. You'd be well to stay clear of her. She was jailed not too long ago for disturbance at Free Trade Hall. Even the ladyship has stopped inviting her to the hall. I must go. I think you should stay here. Let me alone, Maud. You disappear my orders, girl, and you can pack your bags now. You know what? I won't need no bag. You know what you can do with your job? Let her alone. Don't speak to Maud like that. You go on, say it. Hang on, is it? I'm coming with you. <sighs> That's a fine mess we got ourselves into. I suppose I'll have to come to the meeting with you now. There's something I must do first. This is my friend, Joe Ty. Nice to meet you, Mr Ty. If you will excuse me, I have to meet with my friends, Alice and Constance. Is that your new lady friend? Don't talk rubbish, lad. She ain't think of Kay Hardy. Not yet. Come on. Show me the pancakes, Lydia. Oh, isn't it exciting? Look at them all. Idiots! Every single one of them. Panker sheep. But I thought you supported the cause. Don't be so naive, Alice. It's just some things that was a little thrill in our boring lives. Anyway, why do women want the vote when we've got stupid men to do the work? You ready? I'm ready. Good. Now be careful who you select. We only want to attack the poorer elements. Now anybody who looks half decent, you leave. Agreed? Agreed. But I'll be after one particular head. And you better pay up. Meet me at the arms later. I'll be there, but for now, I've got another appointment. Wait here, Rose. I'm going round the back. Very nice, my dear. Very nice. Now, I've got a young man coming to see you. Very handsome. And he's asked specially to see you. And you're going to do exactly what he tells you to do. Have you got that? But I don't want to meet him, Aunt Edith. You do. And you will. Because if you don't, you're going to be out on the street. And you don't want that, do you? Izzy! What's going on? What are you doing to my sister? Oh, get out of here, Isabella. You don't belong here. How right you are. Come on, B. Where are you going to take her? As far away as I can. Come on, B. Let her go, Izzy, or I'll cut you up. <gasps> the front door was open. You! Ready, Rose? Ready. Remember, God is mine. Lydia, I want to go home. I don't like it. Wait a minute. I want to take it all in. Wasn't it thrilling watching all the panic? Come on, Connie, we're not staying here. Fine, run away. <laughs> Women! <Yeah>. Please help. <laughs> Me help, the gardener boy. Anyway, I've ruined my fine dress. Goodbye, George. <laughs> George! Oh, George! Is there? We have to go. Your aunt will have alerted the police. Please help! This boy needs to go to the hospital. Don't worry, I'll stay with them. Then 
the arrow to send the one to attack me and took the little girl. Hey! Stay there! Stay right there! It says here in the newspaper, several suffragettes appearing in court on Tuesday following the arrest of a disturbance in Parliament. They were charged with a breach of peace and sentenced six months in, in imprisonment. The reading's getting really good now, Rose. Just a minute. Amongst those were Adela and Sylvia Pankhurst, Teresa Billington and Annie Kenner. That's the second time this year Anne and Teresa Billington were jailed in June for slapping a policeman and kicking him on his leg. Hurrah! That's not very nice, B. But I suppose they're a good cause too. Things are changing now. Women are working hard to persuade politicians to give them the right, but they won't listen. Persuasion will give way to confrontation. What do you mean, Izzy? It means that sometimes you have to break bad laws to change it for the better. If that means prison, then that's the way to get our cars into people's minds. One day, we'll win the right to be as equal as men, and I intend to be there when it happens. Poor Anna, it was her who brought us here to work for Colonel Billington and his family. Far away from Manchester and those Blackstons. And horrible, horrible and Edith. I want to stay here forever and ever and ever. Amen. Now let's get back to the house before we lose our jobs, and I won't be able to finish Uncle Tom's cabin. How did? I find you. Your friend Annie told me where you were. Hey, she got me a job as a gardener close by. But why didn't she say? I wanted it to be a surprise. Oh, by the way, you forgot this. Excuse me, is Izzy there? Can you tell it's Ben? Izzy! There's a boy for you, it's Ben! Hiya. I just wanted to know if you wanted to come out with me for a bit. Yeah. Go on, go now! Action. Thanks, Susie. You're welcome, Mish. I enjoyed your lesson today. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen you. Half past. <laughs> Start the car, drop. <laughs>
But if you'd rather... It's alright. Yeah, no, just... just... Oh, he attacked Rose. Damn. He attacked Rose. Well, that's none of your business. Oh, I've got my line. <laughs> but in this time of great social reform. Move. Yeah. No, not at all. I'm going to go Mortal Kombat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that one. I'm oh, sorry, that's that. Very, very dashing. I know I was gonna say it. Walk off. With you. <laughs> that was quite good until you didn't go What are you doing to my sister? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Look at them all. No, it's pathetic, is it? It's idiot. Sorry. That's a wrap. Yeah.